In this video, we're going to look at everything the Formation app does. We'll talk about RGB colors and reveal the secret disco mode. We'll look at how to get the best reactions when showing it off and how to secure Formation for public display so visitors can interact but can't change the settings. Then we'll look at configuration, setting up your Formation with and without a local Wi-Fi network. And we'll touch on advanced configuration for people making their own animations. To demonstrate the app, we need to film with the strobes on. I've set the camera shutter at 100% open, and by running formation at the same frame rate as the camera frame rate, we can approximate what it looks like to the human eye. It is an approximation. There's the wandering little black bar artifact. And while I love my camera, it also struggles with the strobe brightness, which washes out a lot of color contrast. But the animations are clear, so let's get into it. Installing the app is straightforward, but there are a couple of points to mention. You must have location turned on in your device settings. This is because the Formation app needs to see the list of local Wi-Fi networks so that it can tell the control board on your machine about them. Secondly, remember to add the dash in Formation when searching the Play Store, otherwise you might struggle to find the app. Finally, make sure to say yes to the permission requests when you install and open the app. People are gathered round your machine. They've oohed and aahed, and now they're curious how it works. The first thing to explain is that it's all about the strobe lights. Without the strobes, the animation is nothing but a spinning blur. No video tricks here. What's happening on screen is what it looks like in person. Except better, of course. Turning the strobes on and off like this always got the best reactions it shows. It's startling and fun, but it's also key in illustrating how formation works, how the illusion is created by the strobe lights. They're on for less than a millisecond, and the light is so quick that it freezes the scene creating an animation frame. And because that frame is so bright, the persistence of vision effect in your eyes means you can't see the darker, blurry bits in between each frame. See our How 3D Zoetropes Work video for more on this. The other key interaction is controlling the animation speed, or frame rate. Unfortunately, we can't film this, because filming only works when the frame rate of the animation and the camera are the same. You can see the sync problem when the carousel starts up or slows to a stop. But imagine a flipbook, and if you could precisely control the page flip rate with a slider button. That's what the animation speed control does. Just for fun, the strobes are RGB, and I included color control in the app from the start, but earlier app versions had percentage sliders for infinite color control. That was hard to use and confusing. For RGB strobes, the interesting colors are at the extremes, where at least one of red, green, or blue is 100% and the others are zero. So color buttons are easier, more effective, and look cooler. Mostly, the colors look better in person. The LX100 dynamic range isn't quite wide enough to do them justice. Except for the frogs and cyan. The camera adds something funky here I can't see off camera. What about this secret disco mode? That's another feature there from the start. Disco mode randomly cycles the strobes through the RGB spectrum. Previously, it was started by a long contact on the touch button, but this was also confusing and hard to use. Now, you key in a secret button combo in the app. White, red, green, and blue in under two and a half seconds. Disco mode is engaged. Out of the box, Formation runs its own Wi-Fi network. The app will detect this and automatically switch to the Formation network and load the settings screen so that you can configure it for your local Wi-Fi network instead. We give the machine a name and configure it for your preferred local Wi-Fi.
The app will then switch back to the controls screen, while Formation drops its network and connects as a client to your Wi-Fi. It blinks twice to acknowledge this. Meanwhile, the app again automatically switches off, switches Wi-Fi networks and connects to Formation. Formation doesn't have to be configured to run on a local Wi-Fi network. You can leave it running its own network, but you should give your machine a name so that it doesn't always load the settings screen when you load the app. Also, you should replug the power socket to reboot the machine. Then the Formation Wi-Fi name will take the name of the machine. But first, note, always leave at least five seconds before replugging the power socket, or you risk damaging the electronics. So, after booting up, we can see the new Wi-Fi network name. And when using Formation in Wi-Fi direct mode like this, you should connect to that network before starting the app. You might get a warning from Android about the network having no internet. Obviously, you answer yes to keep the connection and save the choice here. Controlling Formation from multiple devices is not a deliberate feature but it's a fun way to illustrate secure access and how we can lock control to the app on one device. You can also see part of my Android device test suite. <laughs> if you have a formation on public display, you don't want visitors to access and change settings like the Wi-Fi config or the strobe timings. Out of the box, formation is open and using the app, anyone can connect, interact and change the settings. So let's say this tablet is the device that we want visitors to use. If I open settings, put in a password, and turn on the app lock, then Formation acknowledges the lock with a double green blink, and simultaneously, the other devices are disconnected. Now, only the tablet with the password can talk to Formation, and once the app is screen pinned, visitors will be locked into the app. Of course, you can switch the app lock off again from the settings page and you'll get a double blue flash acknowledgement from the machine. And here, all my other devices will automatically reconnect. Again, not intended use, but I thought it was interesting. Unfortunately, screen pinning doesn't work on this Lenovo tablet, so we'll use my phone. Once the phone connects, the settings button is enabled, but because app lock is on, it disappears after 10 seconds. That way, you can access the settings, but once the app is screen pinned, visitors can't because they can't restart the app. To screen pin the app, access the Recent Apps Overview. Hit the middle button on top of the app and select Pin This App. Now the device is locked into the app and you need the pin code to get out of it. Note that to use screen pinning, you'll need to enable it in the settings, like this. Another important feature for interactive public display is the reset timer. Visitors often won't leave the controls as they found them, and might leave formation stopped, or running in a strange color, or at a strobe rate that is hard to watch. The reset timer monitors the app, and after there has been no interaction for X seconds, it resets the controls to defaults. Here, we set X to 5 seconds. That way, a visitor can stop the machine, or turn off the strobes, and leave. Then, X seconds later, after no one has touched the app, it will revert to default control values, which are white strobe color, 28 FPS animation rate, and 50% strobe brightness. Note, this feature is intended for use with a display case. You don't want to stop the animation and have your hands near the characters, only for the carousel to automatically start up again. The animations work because the strobes flash a set number of times per carousel revolution. For fish, frogs and snakes, it's 20, matching the number of frames in the animation loops. 
but what if you want to run an animation with a different number of frames? For example, the Lego carousel is a 16 frame animation, not 20. So we need the strobes to flash 16 times per revolution instead. Formation comes pre-configured, but if you're making your own animations, or you want to swap between the Lego and one of the others, you'll need to change this value. I'll make a more detailed video on this later, and the link will be in the description. But for the Lego carousel, with this motor, counts per strobe is set to 178.75.